The United Nations atomic watchdog is urging Russia and Ukraine to establish a safety zone around the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Uh, the hits that this facility has uh, received and that I could personally see and uh, assess together with my experts is simply um, uh, unacceptable. We are playing with fire. That is the head of the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, speaking after he and other inspectors examined the damage at the plant. He says shelling should stop immediately. The head of the United Nations, the Secretary General, also calling a no-fire zone at that nuclear plant. Shelling has damaged six different areas of the plant, some close to reactor buildings. The plant is, on this day, 196 of the war, still under Russian control. Reporter Julia Chapman is live in Kiev for us. Tell us more about this, Antonio Guterres echoing the IAEA warning, and what is the Ukrainian government saying in reaction to the nuclear watchdog's report, Julia? The Ukrainian government has welcomed this report. Uh, this morning, we heard from the energy minister here in Kyiv, Herman Halushenko, who said that uh, Ukraine highly appreciates the work of the IAEA mission, uh, but said now the task is implementing the recommendations. Ukraine is very concerned that this report said that there had been safety violations, uh, that there was a very high risk that something could escalate at the nuclear power plant because of shelling happening in the area. And of course, the report also mentioned extensive damage to the nuclear power plant as well. Uh, Ukraine is calling for the area around the plant to be demilitarized, echoing the UN's calls as well. But of course, Kyiv wants to get that power plant back under Ukrainian control, something that Russia simply isn't willing to give it. Uh, of course, we also heard in the report from the IAEA that there is Russian military equipment being stored inside the power plant as well, something of great concern to both inspectors and officials here in Kyiv. Uh, we also heard from Ukraine's top nuclear safety expert today, suggesting that the power plant could be shut down for safety reasons. It's not clear how Ukraine would be able to implement a shutdown when it doesn't have control. As it stands, the power plant isn't connected to the Ukrainian energy grid. Uh, it is operating on its own. It's running its own energy. Uh, and that is something that the Ukrainian government is watching with concern. I also want to ask you, since we are uh, reporting this morning out of Kiev, the Save the Children organization has released a report, very disturbing one, Julia, as we reach this milestone, day 196, as I mentioned. And the milestone is that a thousand Ukrainian children have been killed or injured since the start of fighting. Can you tell us more about that? That's right. Save the Children has been analyzing UN verified data, confirming that uh, that threshold has been reached. That number of 1,000 children injured or killed since February 24th uh, includes 372 children who have lost their lives in the fighting so far and 635 who have been injured. Uh, really significant numbers of children who have been affected. And Save the Children goes on to stress that there is still fighting, of course, in urban areas in eastern and southern Ukraine. Many children have to shelter to protect their lives. They've warned that that uh, poses a huge risk to emotional uh, damage as well, psychological damage to those children who do survive. Uh, undoubtedly, humanitarian efforts are very complicated in any war zone. There are a number of organizations working across Ukraine to get aid to areas where it is needed. Uh, but certainly the front line is movable. There are many children and families who are stuck in areas where there is still ongoing conflict. And efforts to evacuate people from the front lines uh, are still very difficult. Julie Chapman, thank you very much. Reporting live from Kyiv this morning.